Have you had a question like, what is the most expensive coffee in the world in 2022? Well, the expensive coffee does not mean the extra health benefits are there, but yes, you can say it's a passion. Coffee is available in a wide variety of cultivars as well as preparation methods. As a consequence, it's no surprise that some coffees are more expensive than others. And of course, they have some extra ingredients to make it ultra-luxury as well as costly. Before we get to know the coffees, for you guys who haven't subscribed 5WH plus H channel, don't forget to click the subscription button and the notification bell, so you guys get to watch 5WH plus H new video when it's up. Number 1 The Black Ivory Coffee Company LTD in Northern Thailand produces a brand of coffee made from Arabica coffee beans that are consumed by elephants and retrieved from their feces. Elephants' digestive enzymes, which break down the coffee's protein, influence the flavor of Black Ivory Coffee. Black Ivory Coffee is one of the most premium coffees in the world, costing $2,000 a kilogram. The coffee is offered by the manufacturer to a select high-end hotel for $50 per cup. The coffee can also be bought on the internet. The coffee product was just 215 kilograms in 2021. The availability of black ivory coffee is determined by the number of coffee cherries, the appetite of elephants, the number of beans destroyed by chewing, and the ability of mahouts and wives to recover intact beans. The high cost of the finished product is attributed in part to the large number of coffee cherries required. From 33 kilograms of raw coffee cherries, only one kilogram of the finished product is created. Number 2 This farm was purchased in 1874 by Jess Aguirre Panama, who was the original owner. He began farming sugarcane, corn, beans, and tobacco to manufacture crystallized sugar known as panela or brown sugar loaf. Around 1900, he began planting and producing coffee on his farm. He named it E.L. Injerto, after a local fruit of the same name. The farm is now handled by the Aguirre family's third and fourth generations, who have worked on the estate since 1956, when production was around 300 bags of parchment coffee. Now, they work with a wonderful team, and the same goal is to create speciality coffee while maintaining environmentally agricultural techniques and emphasizing entrepreneurial social responsibility, it established a new farm management model that is financially viable for all parties involved. After all these years, they have honed their skills in the production of high-quality coffee. They have spent a lot of money on research, technology, and education to be able to do this. The agricultural plantations are located in the Huetenango Highlands, close to the famed Sierra de los Cucumitanes and range in altitude from 1500 to 1920 meters above sea level, where the most delicate and unusual types are planted. El Injerto's coffees convey the most authentic representation of its terroir, which is defined by the climate and soil characteristics of its location. The premises that guide the procedures of our coffees are respect and learning about the origins of our varieties. Number 3 In 1940, a Swede called Hans Elliot brought the estates that made Hacienda La Esmeralda together as a single estate. This property, which is today the Palmyra and Cos Verdes farms, covered several hundred hectares. Rudolf A. Peterson, a Swedish-American banker, purchased Hacienda La Esmeralda in 1967 as a retirement business. The property was mostly pasture for beef cattle at the time, with a few smatterings of coffee thrown in for good measure. By 1975, the Petersons had converted the farms to dairy cattle, which performed admirably and now account for half of Esmeralda's farmland. In the mid-1980s, the family was trying to diversify their business. And coffee, with its long history of production in the Boquete region, seemed like the perfect fit. Coffee had been grown on the plains of Hacienda La Esmeralda since at least 1890. Because of this large reservoir of coffee experience and tradition, the Petersons were able to rehabilitate most of their property for coffee production. They even expanded their first coffee farm at Palmyra in 1988. 
The Petersons focused their efforts on building an infrastructure that would support superior lot separation, precise processing, and a robust auction format. The desire for experiments like natural processing, as well as even more specificity in lots, developed in lockstep with the rise in auction prices. Number 4 Kopi Luwak is a coffee made from partially digested coffee cherries that the Asian palm civet has eaten and defecated. Civet coffee is another name for it. The cherries are fermented as they transit through the intestines of a civet, then collected after being defecated with other feces. The wild capture and trading of Asian palm civets are becoming more common. The islands of Sumatra, Java, Bali, Sulawesi and Timor-Leste in Indonesia are the main producers of civet coffee. In the Philippines, produce is often harvested in forests or produced on farms. Coffee bean producers claim that the procedure improves coffee through two mechanisms, a selection process starting when the civet only eats certain cherries and a digestive process when biological or chemical mechanisms, in the animal's digestive tract alter the coffee cherries. Even though kopi luwak is a type of processing rather than a coffee variety, it has been became one of the world's most costly coffees, with retail costs ranging from $100 per kilogram for cultivated beans to $1,300 per kilogram, for wild collected. Number 5 Ospina Coffee, the world's oldest family-owned coffee firm, was founded in 1835. Don Mariano Ospina Rodriguez, the company's founder, was a Colombian coffee pioneer who went on to become the country's president in 1857. Ospina Coffee is manufactured from unique Arabica typica beans grown on the volcanic slopes of the Andes Mountains. These are harvested by hand when ripe, then cleaned, fermented, sun-dried, ground, and roasted. Ospina has a distinct flavor profile, with a velvety texture with berry and coconut undertones. From those five coffees, is there any coffee that you guys used to drink? Or maybe would like to taste it? Don't hesitate to share your opinion in the comment section, and while doing so, don't forget to give the thumb up if you guys liked the video. Thank you for watching this video, and before we part, for you guys who haven't subscribed 5WH plus H channel, don't leave without clicking the subscription button and the notification bell, so you guys won't be missed out when 5WH plus H new video is up. See you guys next time.